So the poem that we're looking at today is Ozymandias by Percy Shelley. We're going to be asking ourselves these three big questions. What is Shelley saying about human power and nature? How does Shelley present his argument through the techniques that he uses? And why might Shelley be concerned with human power and nature? If you have a look at this photograph, I want you to think about what big ideas are explored. So we know that statues are often made of really powerful people. So it looks to me like this is a powerful man, a ruler, but his statue is being pulled down. It makes me think that this once powerful man or ruler has lost some of his power. And that might be the reason why his statue is being removed. Some of you might recognize this photograph as being of Saddam Hussein, a former president of Iraq. The poem that we're looking at today is also about the statue of a powerful ruler, which has, like this photograph, crumbled. The title of our poem is Ozymandias. That's a Greek word, and it's made up of two parts. The first part meaning air or to breathe and the second part which means to rule. So if we put those two parts together, the literal translation of the title of Shelley's poem is to rule the air or even to rule breath. This makes me think that this ruler is really powerful. And if you think about someone ruling the air that you're breathing, you might think of a tyrant or a dictator who's taken away even the freedom of his subjects to breathe. I'd now like you to read the poem. So pause this PowerPoint and if you haven't already read through the poem, while you're reading it, I'd like you to think about the big ideas that Shelley explores. So hopefully you've read the poem now and you've started to think about the big ideas in the poem. So just like we predicted from the photograph and from the title, Shelley is depicting a callous, cruel, powerful leader. He seems cruel through the word frown and he seems like a cold, sneering ruler. We also get the idea that Ozymandias has lots of pride or even hubris, which some of you might remember from Macbeth, meaning excessive pride. Another big idea in this poem is that democracy will triumph over tyranny and dictatorship because this dictator has turned into a colossal wreck. His statue has sunk into the desert. If you look at the final line, level sands stretch far away, that makes me think about the big idea of the power of nature. Because even though Ozymandias' statue is shattered, the sands still stretch far away. So, what is this poem about? This poem is based on a story that Shelley read about a fun the funeral temple of the Egyptian pharaoh Ramesses II, whose Greek name was Ozymandias. According to the story that Shelley read, the temple bore an inscription, I am Ozymandias, King of Kings. We know that Ramesses II, during his reign, built more temples and monuments than any other pharaoh. He also had more wives, apparently he had eight, and more children, which was apparently over 100. However, even though he built hundreds and hundreds of temples. We know that he used slave labor to build these temples and that the slaves suffered hardship under his control. He wanted to build memorials for himself, which he imagined would last forever because he was the king of kings. But today, many of these memorials and statues have crumbled into the sands of the desert. This is a picture, a representation of Shelley's poem, and you can see the traveller here in this antique land looking at the shattered statue. The statue of Ramesses II, who saw himself as the greatest king of all, 
yet all that is left of him is a broken statue. So Shelley's purpose, one of his messages, might be that time gets rid of vanity hubris and that power and glory does not last. So how does Shelley communicate this message? Well, we can see, first of all, the political reading that democracy will triumph over tyranny through Shelley's use of words like sunk and shattered. He's saying here that the power of this ruler will not last. We also get the idea of him being a cruel ruler through words like frown, cold, and sneer, as well as wrinkled lip, which emphasizes that sneer. Shelley uses symbolism of the word sans to suggest that nature and time is more powerful than humans. You might like to think of an hourglass. So um, the instrument that you can sometimes use to measure time, you turn it upside down and the sand pours through the glass. So sand would have been a recognisable symbol to Shelley's audience of time. I also really like the word level in relation to sands. Level reminds me of a democracy which is fair, where people can vote for their rulers. That contrasts to my name is Ozymandias, king of kings. The level sands stretch far away, but the ruler Ozymandias is sunk and shattered. The structure of this poem is also really interesting. Shelley's chosen to use a sonnet, which is a love poem. And this emphasises the love that Ozymandias has for himself. He thinks he is the king of kings. And it's quite clear to me that Shelley is being critical of the love that Ozymandias feels for himself. It's a really proud and callous love. He loves himself, but he doesn't love the people that he's serving. I can tell that Shelley is being critical of Ozymandias' pride through his use of sounds. This line, half sunk, a shattered visage lies. There's lots of sibilance in there, the S sound, but it's used in a really aggressive way. It's like he's hissing violently at this cruel ruler. In contrast, at the end of the poem, the um, boundless sands stretch far away. That's much more of a peaceful S sound. It sounds that as if Shelley is at peace with the fact that this statue has crumbled. The S sound is reflecting the sand in the desert. So what was Shelley's purpose? Why has he written this poem? I think that Shelley wanted to criticise tyrants like Ramesses II or Ozymandias who treat their people cruelly. I think he also wanted to celebrate the power of nature and time as it was much more powerful than human rulers. I think he wanted to teach his readers or his listeners and tell them that they should just wait. If they're being ruled by a ruler who's cold and callous, then their power, like Ozymandias's, will end.